Hi everybody, my name is Lee Asher and I want to take this opportunity to share with you my thoughts about the United States playing card company Cardamundi Merger. If you go on any of the social media platforms, you're going to read a lot of people that are nervous and scared and, and fearful of what's going to happen, the fear of the unknown basically. You know, now that United States Play Card Company has been sold to Cardamundi, you know, are the cards going to get any worse? Are they going to close the factories? Are they going to continue to print the brands that we know and love? These are the things that are being said online. And this is why I'm making this video. I want to I want to quell and quash some of these fears, and I want to give you all a broader perspective of why we shouldn't be nervous. As a matter of fact, we should be partying like it's 1999. This has never happened in our lifetimes. This is, we are watching playing card history in the making. So before I get into all of that, I think it's important to say that if you like what you hear, if you like what you're, you're hearing and you want to hear more, please hit like, make sure you subscribe, and leave a comment. Feedback fuels me. If you don't like what you hear, or if you want to argue, or if you disagree, leave a comment. Feedback fuels me. We'll have a conversation. We'll continue it after this video is over. Okay, I want to state that I do not work for Cardamundi. I also do not work for United States Playing Card Company. I am just a guy who loves playing cards like the rest of us. Right? Maybe a little more than the rest of us. I happen to be the president of the world's largest playing card collectors association. And I collect antique, vintage, and modern decks. So I have a good understanding of the history of these companies and, and what they've done over the years and what I think they're going to do in the future. So I don't read a crystal ball. I don't have any tea leaves. I'm not really uh, the kind of magician that can see into the future. But what we can do, what I can do with you, is look back at the past, right? History repeats itself. So let's take a moment and let's look at United States Playing Card Company. Let's look at Cardamundi and let's see what they've been doing. And maybe that will give us a glimpse into the future. Sound good? Okay. Let's start with United States Playing Card Company. Before they were called United States Playing Card Company, they were actually called Russell and Morgan & Co. And they were uh, about 18, in the 1860s. You can Google the exact date if you want. But these guys were in the business of printing posters for circuses and all types of events and window displays, like really beautiful artwork on really beautiful printing lithographs. It was really beautiful stuff. Uh, but they weren't really into playing cards. Playing cards came to them in about 1881. Again, you can Google all these dates if you'd like. Uh, in 1881 is when we see Russell Morgan & Co., put out the Tiger 101 series, right? They start moving into playing cards as something interesting for their revenue. And uh, lo and behold, they start pumping out a lot of cards. They move through all types of series. They get up, we, obviously we know the 808 series, right? That's the bicycle series, the rider back cards. So this all happened underneath the Russell Morgan & Co umbrella, right? This did not happen underneath the United States Playing Card Company umbrella. So you're asking yourselves, well, how the hell did they become a United States Playing Card Company? Well, this is the answer. It's actually very interesting. And it's very telling, too. In order for United States Playing Card Company to become who they were, they bought out all of their competition. So what we see is we see Russell Morgan & Co. start to print posters and other things and then playing cards. And the business of playing cards gets become so successful that they now have their, their own factory for playing cards and it's getting large. And so they start buying out other competition for their factories, for their brands, for their proprietary methods of how they make things. And so th we see United States Playing Card Company become the largest dog on the block by acquiring all of its competition. They bought out Standard Playing Card Company. They bought out Perfection Playing Card Company. They bought out National Playing Card Company. Uh, over the time, they bought out a lot of playing card companies. Doherty, New York Consolidated Card Company. I could make an entire video just on those acquisitions because it's an awesome story. Okay, but what I need you to focus on is that USPCC became who they were by buying out their competition. Now, let's look at Cardamundi for a second. Okay, what did Cardamundi just do? We've been seeing them for the last few years go around and start buying up playing card manufacturers around the world for their factories and for their brands. And what did we just see them do? We just saw them buy up United States Playing Card Company for their brands, for their factory, for their proprietary way of their making their stocks and finishes. So we're seeing history repeat itself, right? We, we, US, this is how USPC did it. This is how Cardamundi's doing it. 
So let's let's look back at a second. USPCC goes ahead and buys out like someone like National Playing Card Company, for instance. So let's ask some of the questions that are being asked right now for back then, okay? So did they stop printing playing cards once they bought out National Playing Card Company? That's the question that's being asked now. Let's ask that for back then. So they took over National. Did they stop printing playing cards at National? Did they close down the factories at National? And the answer is no, no, not right away at all. They actually left those factories open until it wasn't financially smart to keep them open, right? Because it is business. But that took many, many, many years. But here's the question. Did they stop printing National Playing Cards? The answer is no. Do you own an Aladdin deck of cards, Aladdin brand? That's a national brand playing card, right? That was, that was from their merger and acquisition. Here's another example. Do you, any of you own Tally Ho decks? Well, Tally Ho wasn't an original Russell Morgan company deck. That was an Andrew Doherty line. So when Doherty was merged with United States Playing Card Company, that's when United States Playing Card Company continued to print the Tally Ho line. Right? So again, we're, we're looking at history, and history is showing us that quite the opposite of what we fear, that of course this is going to continue. Here's the best example I can give you. How many of you own B-Dex? Who owns a B-Dex? Right? Okay. B-Dex were actually New York Consolidated Card Company's decks. But when they merged with United States Playing Card Company, United States Playing Card Company realized the value of this brand was so strong that they pushed it forward, and this is the strongest brand of their entire line. This is what they sell to casinos. This is what they sell all around the world. This is the most popular playing card in China. Like, this is their best, and it wasn't theirs to begin with. Interesting, right? Again, history is going to repeat itself. So we're going to see Cardamundi do something like that. We're going to see them continue the line. Maybe we're going to see them take the B brand in and make it even bigger. I don't know. Again, I don't own a crystal ball. I don't work for Carter Monday. I don't work for USPC. So I'm just looking back at history. Let's look at Carter Mundi for a couple of minutes, okay? Carter Mundi started in around 1970, and their main goal is to print playing cards. They have Their business has grown, obviously, over the years. They have acquired other companies with older lineage, uh, like Copig, for instance, and we'll talk about those guys in a minute, but those Copig was started in 1919. They're a South American company out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. They're a playing card manufacturer, family owned, awesome playing cards, awesome history, really, really cool. Cardamundi owns 50% stake in them. Again, we'll talk about those guys in a minute, but Cardamundi has acquired businesses older than they are for, for reason, for good reason, okay? Because I believe, and this is just a guess, I believe that they do care about history and lineage. And, and I think that will become more apparent the more we talk and, and as, the, as the future kind of unravels itself. We'll see that. Uh, but for now, let's again, let's talk about Cardamundi. They print playing cards. They also print board games and collectible card games and collectible cards and the Magic the Gathering, for instance. Like the, These guys eat, breathe, and sleep playing cards. And that's important. That's really important, okay? Because let's let's look back at the business end of United States Playing Card Company for let's say like the last 40, 50, 60 years, okay? In my lifetime, I'm only I'm 43, but in my lifetime, I have only seen United States Playing Card Company be self-owned once, and it was for a very short period in the 90s. But other than that, in my entire lifetime, it has always been owned by conglomerates of corporate brands. So, for instance, um, in the, I think it was in the 70s or 80s, Jessup and Lamont owned United States Playing Card Company. And you're asking, who the hell is Jessup and Lamont? Well, Jessup and Lamont were a brokerage firm on Wall Street. And their job, their, their sole job was to make money, but also to make money by taking different kinds of companies and conglomerating them and putting them to get, packaging them together, if you will, and then having this super brand, if you will, and that's how they would make a lot of money. Great in theory. And I think that they probably did make a lot of money in, in a certain period of time. But they didn't love playing cards. That wasn't their main goal, right? They were United States Playing Card Company was just another company on their roster sheet in their portfolio. So we see, let's say, like uh, Newell takes over, or, or Jardine, actually. Jardine takes over. And Jardine's the same thing. Jardine is a, a conglomerate of corporate brands. Like, for instance, they were big on the camping aspect of life. 
So they owned Coleman camping equipment, Coleman coolers and stuff. They thought that if you went camping, you'd drink coffee and play cards. So they owned Mr. Coffee, and then they owned United States Playing Card Company. So you can see they associated different brands together, packaged them together, if you will, and, be and it became this big super umbrella company. But they never cared about playing cards. Playing cards was just one of the line items on the balance sheet, which is fine, and that's business, and that there's nothing wrong with that. But there's a huge distinction now, right? Because Cardamundi is not that. Cardamundi is a playing card manufacturer. So now what we're seeing is a playing card company being merged and now run by people who love, eat, breathe, and sleep playing cards. How is this a bad thing? It can't be. It really can't be, okay? So let's talk a bit. Let's talk for a second about why they bought United States Playing Card Company. Like, what, what, what's valuable about United States Playing Card Company? And this is important, because I think a lot of people miss this. And I'm going to read off of my notes. I have like three pages of notes, and I don't want to miss anything here, okay? So, I think one of the reasons why Cardamundi has started to acquire all these other manufacturers is obviously for the factory, right? They they have property and factory. Like, that's that's worth something. That's, that's, that's worth a, actually a decent amount of money. So Cardamundi acquired USPCC for their factory, for the land they have in Kentucky, for all of the machinery that they have within that building. But they've also, they've bought it for the brands, right? The bicycle brand is known and trusted worldwide. That's got to be worth something. Same thing with the B brand, same thing with Tally Ho, same thing with a lot of brands that United States Playing Card Company has acquired over the years. So they've owned, they, they, they bought that. Here's another thing they bought that no, no one's talking about. United States Playing Card Company has a couple of proprietary processes. For instance, they make their own card stock in-house. So they, they'll buy two rolls of very thin pieces of paper, of press paper, and then they have their own proprietary glue, right? It's called like a, it's a, a black core glue. And they glue the paper together like so, and they run it through these machines and they press them, and then out, out comes this stock. And depending on how thick or thin they crush it, it's bicycle stock, it's B stock, it's whatever stock that you're, you're willing to print on. And so they do all of this in-house. And so that's, that's a huge savings in cost. But more important, this is how they control the quality. This is how their cards feel different than all the other cards around the world. Well, I'll tell you what, Cardamundi values that 100%. And so they just bought those proprietary processes. So if you think about it, let's let's throw up like some of the modern questions now. You know, are they going to stop printing cards? Are the quality going to get worse? No. Why would it? They just bought. We just agreed that they just bought that process for a reason, right? That 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 process makes cards feel different than every other card around the world. Why would they get rid of that? Why would they stop that? See, that doesn't make sense. So the smell test says, nope. That that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Here's another thing. United States Playing Card Company has the lock on casino printing for all the, the playing card casinos that they print. You know, they, the United States Playing Card Company basically does it. That's what they do. There's another company out of Japan called Angel, and they do a lot of the, the Asian casinos. But for the most part, the most trusted name in the game is United States Playing Card Company when it comes to casinos. And casinos are very taboo, right? These guys are very scared of change. Like very, you think that you and I are scared of change? You should look at a casino. Those guys haven't changed forever. That's why you don't see a lot of brand new games on casino floors. It's just the same old games. We don't like change. It's, everything's taboo. Change is taboo. So now, imagine you having to call up a casino to say, hey, look, we closed down the Kentucky factory. We're not making playing cards like that anymore. And you're going to have to get your cards from uh, Turnhout, Belgium. Do you see the casinos being happy about that? And the answer is no. Of course not. And this is the biggest part of United States Playing Card Company's business, are the casinos. So they're not going to mess with that. Cardamundi's smart, right? They're not going to mess that one bit at all. So again, all of these, these thoughts about them closing the factory or changing the stocks or making it so they're not going to print the brands anymore, that's, that's all fearful. That's all unfounded because history proves to us that they did the opposite that they continued the lines, that they, they brought in all of this proprietary information. They started to innovate in, in those kinds of ways. And so that's, that's really the crux of a lot of it right there, is the proof that that's not going to happen. Okay, so let me check my notes here. So let's go over this. Let's say, 
what's going to happen in the near future, right? I, I keep reading that statement a lot. So here's what I've uh, wrote. In the near future, I don't think a lot's going to happen. I think everything's going to stay status quo. Um, I think Cardamundi has basically said that in their responses. You know, we've heard from their administrative end, that we've heard from some of their custom end. They've all basically said the same thing. And even USPCC has said the same thing. You know, Mike Slaughter, the president, has said, nothing's changing. And I, I believe that. I believe that. Why should it change? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make financial sense for things to change in that way. But I think over time, this is what we will see. If any of you have ever printed with United States Playing Card Company, you'll know that when you want some kind of bell and whistle, for instance, like a foiling on your tuck case, they have to send that outside of their factory to do that. And it's not necessarily cost effective for anyone, right? Prices increase, it becomes very expensive. I, yeah, some of you are already shaking your head. You know, you know, right? They don't, they don't do that kind of thing in-house. Well, remember I said that Cardamundi had bought up different factories around the world and they have different playing card factories around the world? Well, one of the factories they have is in Dallas, Texas. And what I foresee happening is instead of United States playing card companies sending those kind of foiling things out to a third party company, I think we're going to see them start sending it to their own factory in Dallas to bring the costs back down so that USPCC will be competitive that way. Because right now it's not so competitive. Right, like the, the, you're going to be able to get better pricing around other places, and so I think Carta Mundi wants to compete in that realm, and so we're going to see that happen. We might even see them bring in, like in house into Kentucky, a foiling center. Now that's interesting, right? So we're going to see those kinds of things happen over a period of time, right? It might even be so slow you might not even recognize that it's happening until it's already happened. So, okay, let's talk about this. Are they going to close? The Erlanger factory, and I already I already touched on this a little bit with the casinos, but you know I think that's a pretty drastic thing to do. This company just spent a bunch of money, and the first thing they're going to do is just start closing things. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make fiscal sense at all. So, you know, again, I think that casinos make up a large part of United States playing card company's bottom line, and if they close the Erlanger factory and they move production elsewhere, maybe to Dallas, maybe they move it to uh, back over to to, um, to Belgium, I think the casinos are going to, to, to be hinky about it. I think they're, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? Why are you guys messing with, why are you messing with something that's not broken? And I believe that was actually one of the quotes from one of the guys at Cardamundi was, why are we going to mess with something that's not broken? So Kentucky factory is not broken, guys. It's not going anywhere. Okay. Will playing cards start to suck? Okay, fair question. Fair question. So let's look at it. Again, personally, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that they just bought out that proprietary process of making their own stocks and finishes. So why would they stop that? As a matter of fact, I think what's about to happen is they're going to take that information and start to inject that in all of their other factories around the world. And vice versa. I think that they're going to take some of the information that they have from, let's say, Copig in South America and their Turnhout Belgium factory and their factory in Austria and their factory in there. They're going to take all that information and they're going to inject that back into United States Playing Card Company. We're about to see like a massive sharing of knowledge between all of these manufacturers because it's owned by one entity. And I think that's super interesting. Right now, again, I'm, I am just I'm looking into my crystal ball. But wouldn't it be neat if, let's say, for instance, uh, the Tally Ho line was printed on a Cardamundi stock in Turnhout, Belgium? Or how about the Turnhout, Belgium prints the 301 line from Copeg on Tally Ho stock? Like, there's all types of things that can mix and match now that are very interesting that I do think Cardamundi will play with. Why? Because they can. It doesn't cost them much to do that. And that's pure innovation. Right? That's like, I, I can't wait to see what they're about to do. And that's super exciting. That's, that for me is the most exciting part of it. Okay. Now here's, here's uh, one last question. I will address the fears of, are they going to stop printing everyone's favorite brands? And the answer is no. Why would they? That doesn't make, why would they, why would they try to fix something that's not broken? I think again, we're going to see more of our favorite brands being injected into other playing card factories around the world. We're about to see more people love the Tally Ho line. More people love the 301 line. More people love the playing cards that we appreciate and respect and want more of. 
Like, I think they're going to give us what we want, guys. I really do. Okay. So, let's talk about cardamundi in regards to magic and cardistry and collecting. Because it was very interesting. If you read any of the press release from them, they mentioned cardistry. That's brand new. We haven't heard anyone at that level talk about those kinds of things. We've seen people come into the, the custom end of United States Playing Card Company and print cards specifically for cardists. But we've never seen United States Playing Card Company print cards specifically for cardists through their own line, right? We, we haven't seen that. But we are seeing Cardamundi do that. And we've been seeing them do that for actually for a, a little while. This isn't, this isn't new, right? Like again, 301 line. We've watched them take the 301 line, which is Copig's, by the way. That is from South America. And they have, because they've bought into that, they now take that over to their, their Turnhout Belgium factory, and they start saying, okay, cardists like a thinner stock. So let's start playing with the 301s on a thinner stock. And let's start to, and they are starting to innovate specifically for us. I'm, I'm about to cry, right? Like, this has never, ever happened before. Why would we be scared of this? Oh my God, we should be celebrating this. We should be telling Cardamundi what we love and what we want. We should have a two-way discussion with these guys because this is what they want. It's clear this is what they want. And I think that they want to continue doing this at a much broader level. And I think now part of the ball is in our court, is telling them instead of, hey, I'm scared you guys are going to screw this up. No, we should be saying, hey, I think what you guys are doing is awesome, and what I personally would like to see is a stock that's thinner than this, but thicker than this, or this is our moment, guys. This is our moment. Why are we going to shit up the tub when we can have a party? Like, I, I don't know. I, I, am, I am emotionally shook at some of the things I'm reading, especially by some of the people that I consider to be very smart in the playing card world. But maybe they haven't taken all of this into account. So this is, again, this is why I'm sharing this with you so that you can continue these conversations with people. You can quash some of these fears because they're unfounded. As you are now learning, they are completely unfounded. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we shouldn't be fearful. And you've heard me say this, and I can't stress this enough. As a matter of fact, this, we are living in playing card history, and we should treat it as such. So if you guys have any questions, if you want to talk about this a little more, I totally appreciate you listening to my, my playing card rant. Hopefully I've changed your perspective. Hopefully I've given you a little bit to think about. Hopefully uh, I've given you some positive outlook. I want you to be happy about this because I'm happy about this and I see nothing but positivity. And and, and I hope and if Cardamundi or United States Playing Card Company or any of these playing card manufacturers are listening, just know that we love you, we respect you, and we would love for you to, to innovate with us and make our tools better because, because that would be great. That, nothing could be better than that. And so, again, I thank you for your time. I hope you guys have enjoyed listening to what I have to say. Again, leave those comments, and, uh, and I'll be seeing you guys online. Thanks a lot.